Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. As I mentioned at the start of the show and just, you know, very recently that today I'll be playing the interview of Diane Kali. She's the founder of We Care. We Care is a support group for widows around the country. She's done amazing work encouraging other widows, holding their hands. Unfortunately, we must say no to harmful widowhood practices and all other such things that inhibit women and prevent us from reaching gender equality, which is something that we talk about. We talk about gender equality, we talk about women empowerment a lot. But these harmful practices will continually inhibit women, not just in Nigeria, but several parts of Africa. We still hear situations where a woman loses her husband and she's made to scrape her head and made to sleep with the, to lie in the same room with the corpse, or, you know, they, they help the, the corpse have a bath and ask her to drink the water, saying that, you know, if she, if she killed the husband, that this water will come around to hunt her and kill her. Why do we still have these practices in 2019? Today we have Diane Kalu, the face of widowhood for now, speaking up for other widows, and here's hoping that she eventually comes out to find love. As she says, she's open to finding love again. Enjoy. We care is an all-round support system for these women um, financially, even though we're young, socially, economically, emotionally, spiritually. We help them balance. Mental health is very important. Very, very, very important. When someone, if someone is not mentally balanced, nothing is going to is going to um, be able to get through to that person. So we first help to make sure that they're mentally balanced, you know, to face what is coming their way head on. There are several harmful widowhood practices that are prevalent in Nigeria and mostly in developing countries. A woman's husband is said to be her crown. And this crown conferred to her by the society by way of her marital status when taken away by death she's you know defaced she's dethroned and she's disinherited and this shouldn't be the case in for, for whatever reason you know every woman desires to have a happy home nobody goes into marriage with the intention of being widowed but life happens and nobody's exempted from anything it can happen to anyone. And I'll just quickly say that widows are the most vulnerable people in the society. People may not know that. I often say that we are endangered species because there are a lot of um, challenges that we face. And speaking of harmful widowhood practices, sometimes the society unconsciously, you know, portrays this act to this women why by the scornful look you give her because she's not wearing rags you know by when you see her dressing well you feel oh okay why should she dress well you and they forget that these things were bought before her husband passed she shouldn't throw them away and life continues after widowhood it's a second phase it's only i mean it's only a phase after a phase so she should leave and then these practices, there are so many that still happen in subtle ways that people wouldn't even believe they, they still exist. And these things should be looked into, like shaving of hair. If a woman loses her husband, and she, it should be a voluntary response or a voluntary out of will for her if she says, oh, okay, I want to honor my husband by shaving my hair. It should not be something that will, that that is compulsorily given to her to do. And um, a case, there was a case, you know, that I came across, a woman who lost her husband and she was asked to pay for the shaving of her hair, to buy goods and things like that for the shaving of her hair. Someone who just went through emotional turmoil and then you're asking her to buy stuff for what funeral, funeral right is it going to bring back the dead is it going to change the fact that he's never coming back some places it's so bad that in some places they wash the cups and ask the widow to drink the water as part of their fetish rights and this is very unacceptable 
um, in other places, people may not know, but it's still, I mean, it's still very, very existent. Um, some people think that a widow is, is also an inheritable property of her husband. So they tell the, they, they assign a male relative to take over from the husband. That's very laughable in 2019, very laughable. So these things, I know that a law has been passed to this regard, but I think that more should be done. It should be looked into. These women have a right to leave. They have a right after their spouses pass, they still have a right to leave, especially because most of them have young children. If they are not mentally stable, if they are not emotionally balanced, it goes back to the children. And what does that do? We raise what? Very irresponsible, or what would I call it? Um, children who are half baked children. If a mother is focused and she's you know, mentally healthy, she will raise healthy children. Treat them like normal human beings. What is done is done. She's not different from you. I mean, this is flesh and blood, same as you. Don't look at her differently because she, I mean, you feel life dealt her a blue. It could be anybody. It could just be anybody. If you can't give her compassion, don't give her any other thing. And be more caring towards them. For me, being a woman is a verb. It's an action word. It means that I'm everything. I, I can be everything I want to be at any time. I'm as powerful as I believe I am. I can achieve anything I want to achieve in this world. How do I feel? Um, nobody ever heals from grief completely. You move forward. You don't completely forget about what happened to you. So I would say I've healed okay. Some days are better than some days. Some days are good, some days are bad, some days are really, really, really bad. So I'll just say I'm still a work in progress, one step at a time, one day at a time. Every woman who is grieving, I'd like to say that you're not alone and know that grief has no manual. It has no booklet to it. Everyone grieves differ differently, so you're allowed to grieve. If you need to cry, please cry. But do not feel that it is, I mean, this is failure for you. You only fall to get back up. And when you get back up, it's simply rebirth. Your, your crown only shifted. It only shifted, so just Place it back on your head, and you'll see you're going to you're going to go very far. This is just a phase. It's just one little phase, and it will pass. Just believe in one day at a time. Live for the second, not for the day, not for the week, not for the month, not for the year. For just that second, that second, and do anything legitimate that makes you happy. If I could meet with my husband again, one more time, what would I say to him? I'll smack him on the back, on the back and ask him why he left me alone. <laughs> Lord, I keep on thanking you for making me a woman. Make me just one who prizes more than Ruby. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.